Hey everybody, welcome to our kitchen. I'm Holly and this is Abigail. Hi everyone. And we're the cooking family. We're so glad you're here today. Thanks for joining us. In just a few minutes, we're gonna have a live cooking demonstration. Uh, a couple of our family's favorite things. And um, we wanna <laughs> welcome the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group and Amy, we're so glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. And also we wanna welcome the IP 101 family with Gail, and uh, we appreciate you sharing us with your community. We would love it if you would like this video and share it with anybody, uh, any of your friends who might benefit from watching it. Um, we make family friendly meals and show you how to use your Instant Pot uh, to do that. And um, so we would love it if you would share and like this video. It helps get it out to more people. So. Abigail, uh, we've been working on our fall garden this week. You want to tell them about it? Sure. So, um, we have some, oh my goodness, start over. Uh, we got some plants and we got uh, carrots and we planted those and they didn't make it. I don't know why, but they didn't. And so we planted more seeds of carrots. Those have not sprouted yet. Um, we have lettuce. We have Brussels sprouts, which I'm mm -hmm. really excited about. We have, I planted onion seeds. They're tinier than a mustard seed. They're very hard to plant. Um, but it was fun and I got it done. So, um, so I, I want to break in and seeds. say, I grew up in Indiana where there is one gardening season and it's pretty short, uh, but now we live in Texas. So we are able, we have a lot of warm weather still to come. So we're planting those cold weather veggies, mostly cruciferous and, um, she meant she kind of went right over the Brussels sprouts. We're, oh. we're all really excited about the Brussels sprouts. I didn't go over. <laughs> I, I said, and we're going to do Brussels sprouts, and yes, we love those. We do. Uh, and also we planted turnips, and turnips, we planted those yes. by, from seed, too, and we kind of had a little seed spill. It's pretty amazing. It's like they popped up, and they're the just this popped thing. right up in a really <laughs> thick group. Part. So yeah. we've got some thinning to do on that. Um, what else? You guys planted green um, beans? Yes, we planted green beans. We got Brussels sprout plants, so we planted those, and we also planted Brussels sprout seeds. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get more kale. I don't know. Yeah, I want to get more kale too, but we haven't done that yet. Um, so only so much you can do. And we still have cucumbers ripening oh. constantly, and some Come bell get peppers. Them, please, <laughs> if you want them. Bell peppers uh, hanging out there. Getting bigger and a In few fact, summer squash. This yeah. is one from our garden. Yeah, we're gonna use that, that we today. Harvested. It's a little bit small. There, uh, I. That's actually the biggest one we've gotten. This is the biggest one we've gotten, but they're nothing like my mom's. Usually, like my mom, she's a, a pro. Uh, so, anyway, that's the story about our fall garden, and um, we would love it again if you would please like and share this video it helps us so much to get this out to more people and um you know those mysterious facebook algorithms just do all the things and hopefully um it'll send it to to all the people that will benefit from watching this and also i think there you can follow um if you follow us the cooking family then it will also notify you of videos that uh, future live videos that we do so anyway um are we are we good okay welcome we're so glad you're here i'm holly and this is abigail and Hi, we're everybody. from the cooking family and today we're going to show you how to make italian sausage lentil soup uh it's becoming soup season really our family likes to eat soup all year round but Fall and winter are just made for soup. Mm -hmm. And this one is really great in the Instant Pot. It's fairly quick. You can just throw everything in. Um, it's also a great one to do for freezer cooking if you like to freezer cook. Um, and it's a fabulous recipe. And then in the middle, uh, stick around and watch us. We're gonna show you how to make creme brulee and you can make mm -hmm. it in your own kitchen. You don't have to be at a fancy restaurant. You can make it in your own kitchen with things you probably already have on hand, and it's very easy, and oh my word, it's so delicious. It is amazing. It's amazing. So, stick okay. around. So, yes, yeah, stick around for that. It'll be in the middle after we get the Italian sausage lentil soup on. 
So this is Italian sausage. Um, you can find it. It's actually more readily available now than it used to be. Uh, right in your sausage section. You can use turkey sausage, but today we're using pork. It's seasoned with Italian seasonings, um, like fennel, oregano, basil, garlic. Um, Aldi has a great Italian sausage. Um, and we're just gonna let that brown. I love this um, spurtle. Uh, it's really easy for kids. It's a lot easier for kids and adults, I think, to break up meat when you're browning hamburger or ground, any ground meat, ground turkey, ground sausage, uh, to use a nice sturdy uh, wooden paddle uh, just helps break up that meat. So, and then we also have in here a lot of very flavorful aromatic vegetables. We've got onion, bell pepper, carrots, celery and garlic, which uh, adds a lot of nutrients and a lot of flavor. And which ones were you going to cut? I forget. I was going to cut the bell pepper and celery. Okay. So Abigail's going to get started and the garlic. on the bell pepper and celery. I'm going to do the gar the onion. I guess I'll do the onion first. Okay. Awesome. And then here are our lentils. They are so nutritious um, and they're fabulous. They're really good for you and they taste delicious, especially when you add all these other yummy veggies into them. So uh, here's how we cut up an onion. The onion has the stem end and the root end. And we're just gonna cut off the stem end to open that onion up. And then I also like to just barely, barely, barely shave off that root end, but keep the rest of the root intact so that it, your onion will hold together. But all these little hairies go away and get off your cutting board. Those are no good in your food. And then next thing we do is just, we have a flat side of the onion and we cut it in half. And that way it doesn't wobble around. Um, do you want to stir that sausage sure. a little bit while I uh, cut up this onion? Um, the sausage is browning nicely. I might actually turn it down. So uh, what I'm going to do to turn it down is press cancel. And then I'm going to press saute again. And I am going to... Um, Find. I'm going to press saute again and you'll see how it cycles through. This is like turning it low on your burner if you're using the stove or normal or more. I'm going to turn it down because it's browning a little too fast. And just a tip, if it gets, if it starts getting brown on your um, bottom of your Instant Pot insert, uh, we're going to deglaze it later. And usually, I don't know if this is going to happen this time, but sometimes when I put the onion in, it has enough juice that I can just scrape it off with the onion juice. But it really depends on the onion and how much it has. But if it does not scrape off, then just use water or broth. Yeah, or you, even your, um, your can of tomatoes that's going to go in. Yes. The yes. important point here is that when you're pressure cooking in the Instant Pot or any electric pressure cooker, it has a great safety feature that um, won't allow it to get too hot on the bottom. But what that means is too, if you have any browned bits on the bottom and they're getting too hot, it's gonna shut your Instant Pot down. You're gonna get the burn notice. It won't come to pressure and it just causes a lot of problems. So you wanna make sure before you pressure cook that you deglaze the pan. And it's easy to do. You just have to make sure you get all that brown off the bottom. Okay, and so we're cutting this onion in little uh, wedges. And notice I'm not cutting all the way through the root end. So I'm keeping that root end intact, keeping my fingers curled. And then I'm going to turn it the other way and go ahead and make little dices. Um, I really recommend that you invest in a good sharp knife um, and a good cutting board in your kitchen there excellent tools and really crucial tools to have in your kitchen um, and if you so one of our main um, visions of the cooking family is to have your children cooking in the kitchen with you so it's important to teach your kids the proper knife skills teach them early how to how to use a knife and go ahead and invest in a couple of good knives and cutting boards because a recipe like this does have a lot of chopping, which is not difficult, but uh, 
One of the blessings of my life now as a mom with three teenagers, an almost 12 year old, is all those four kids can chop something up. So picture this, we've got four veggies. Sometimes we'll come into the kitchen and it'll be like, okay, we've got to get dinner done quickly. So who will cut up an onion? Who will cut up a bell pepper? Who will cut up some celery? Who will chop up some garlic? And then we get it all done really quick. So we've got a great crew of, of sous chefs and sometimes we joke around and call them shoe chefs. Just for fun. I don't know why. Even though we don't make shoes. <laughs> okay, now I don't hear it sizzling at all. So I'm gonna cancel again and press saute again. And I'm gonna just turn it up to normal. So it keeps on, keeps on sauteing those yummy smelling veggies. Okay, so now I'm going to cut up the bell pepper, and remember your cut glove, always. That's right. Um, so, we are going to cut up, dice this bell pepper, right? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we are going, I'm just going to cut this off because it's really annoying. And just chuck it in the um, trash yes. bowl. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put this flat on the cutting board, and we are going to just cut straight down into the middle. In, in the middle and then um, take your two fingers to get the core out take your two yeah first two fingers, fingers and That's just right. pull it up and then um, and all those seeds just seeds. pop right out it makes it so and easy you can just bang it <laughs> and if you don't get every single seed out it's, it's no okay. big deal yeah and I'm just gonna do that to the other one just take some and pull that right out that's and great. Bang it again. Okay, so, and now we are going to take it and we're going to um, just go along and make strips um, on this. You want to get closer to the middle yeah, of your cutting board. Notice, as far as knife skills go, uh, Abigail's gripping the blade of the knife, and that is what gives her a lot more of a stable hold on the knife so that the knife almost becomes a part of her hand instead of wobbling around, you have a lot more stable grip when you're gripping the actual blade. Yes. Obviously not putting your finger down under the blade, but no. just pinching that blade. So then we're gonna go, we're gonna line our strips up and turn them horizontal and cut them into dices pretty much the same way. Mm -hmm. That's right. Just That first cut was a little big, so I'll go back and we cut that and that's okay and that's another area where as a mom or as the adult in the kitchen training um your children there's a line between uh, perfectionism and just getting the job done and i think sometimes we can um ride the perfectionism too much and discourage our kids and so you know there's a there's a fine balance we want to be encouraging and show them the right techniques but not get hung up on it being perfect but of course the goal is to have uniform sizes of your veggies um, so they'll all cook at the same rate so yes and one won't be crunchy and the other's too soft right. and mushy and <laughs> that's right but if it's not when they're children you know they're just learning and getting those skills together so it's awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to cut up some carrots. And first I'm going to um, use the, the um, potato peeler to just peel these carrots. Uh, we like to throw the peelings of carrots and the ends, uh, carrots, onions, and celery mostly, also sometimes bell peppers. We like to throw these in a bag in the freezer. We just keep a broth bag for veggies right in the freezer and then we make our own homemade broth really regularly uh, the instant pot makes it so easy to do that um, because you can just have the the broth veggies ready in the in, in the freezer and we throw our um, rotisserie chicken bones in there and then um, actually we do a separate bag for the bones and a separate bag for the veggies and then when it's time to make broth um, and all of the kids down to the nine-year-old are able to put on a pot of broth and it only takes about five minutes and then you can have um, great homemade broth in your instant pot we keep it always on hand 
Um, you can go to our, our website to find that broth recipe. Um, and it's fabulous. It's super easy. And the Instant Pot makes it very doable to have broth all the time. It's a great budget saver and it's better for you than uh, any of the better than bouillon or any of those um, soup bases or even home, uh, even canned jarred broth. So, okay, here's how we dice the carrots. So we've got them peeled, we cut the ends off, and now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna leave this um, stem end intact again. Can I and go ahead and put these bell peppers yes, in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. She's gonna put the bell peppers into the pot. But I'm going to just leave that stem end, and notice I'm not cutting all the way through. That just keeps all my little strips together and makes it easier. So I'm kind of using my trash to help me as a tool, and then we'll put it in our broth bowl. So I'm just taking my knife, kind of shoving it into the carrot. Um, and this is if you don't want the little carrot rounds. I also like carrot rounds, but for this recipe, I like them in little pieces. Um, so I'm going to just do all the strips first, and then I turned it perpendicular. We'll go down again, and now I'll just line up my little carrots, and it makes nice little cubed carrots just for little dices. I guess in different soups, sometimes I'll do the little rounds. I really like the little coin shapes in um, chicken noodle soup, veggie soup, but for this lentil sausage soup recipe um, I love having the small pieces that's just a personal preference though you could do it whichever way you prefer okay and there we go with our beautiful carrots and we're gonna saute those in here also and then next we just have a little garlic to do Oh, and celery. You're going to show yes. us how to cut up some celery. Like I said, these veggies, it smells so great in here. Carrots, onions, bell peppers, celery adds so much flavor. Yeah, I did shut it off. It was getting a little too much. Um, I'm going to just leave it on there again. Okay, so we are going for about a cup of celery. This actually, these are pretty big. Those are pretty big. So, so I'm going to go adjust. two, but just eyeball. Um, do they need washing? Have we already washed I, them? I'm going to wash. I think they got okay. rinsed. Awesome. Okay, so first, cut glove. <laughs> um, so we like to use this cut glove. It just adds a measure of protection for when we're cutting uh, veggies, um, when kids are cutting. It's not going to stop a knife if you take it and, you know, do really dangerous <laughs> things, but it just adds a little level of protection from nicks. Yes. So um, there, these ends are dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line these up and cut them all off and put them in my trash bowl. Yep. It's the nice thing about a trash bowl. And then I'm going to go to this side, and there's also just roots. And yeah, and I that. I would cut it off oh, all okay. the way up to that green. Awesome. And we're going to get the benefit of that celery. It's going to be great in our broth, and then it will also won't we won't have that fibrous white end. And then I'm just going to cut right down the middle. And again, this is a, a personal preference thing. My family enjoys celery, but we don't like huge hunks of celery. So we just uh, cut down the middle and make the strip a little bit skinnier uh, before we cut up the little pieces. And then we're just going to go along this way. Um, yeah. I don't, yeah, and so um, we're just doing pretty thin slices because, um, again, we don't like big chunks of celery in our food. So I need to cut a few of these smaller. And Abigail, I just scraped the bottom of the pan, uh, the Instant Pot insert, and mm -hmm. you were absolutely right. Every bit of that brown already came off with just some moisture from these veggies. Okay, and you can put those in. I'm going to go ahead and just let that sit for a second, um, and I'm going to show you how to cut up the garlic. Abigail's going to put that in the Instant Pot. So uh, we have found our meat mallet to be the best tool for smashing fresh garlic cloves. They can be a real challenge to peel. If you just try to peel them like this, it takes forever. But if you'll just take a meat mallet, 
You could even use a tin can uh, and just give it a little smash. It breaks open that papery peel and makes it very easy to peel. Uh, of course, if you don't have fresh garlic or don't want to take the time to mess with it, there are other uh, kinds of garlic you can use. You can use the, the jarred minced garlic. Um, if I use that, it has a lot of acid in it uh, as a preservative. So anytime I use the jarred garlic, I like to rinse off that um, juice that came in it. I just think it gives it a little bit better flavor if you rinse it off. Um, you can also use powdered garlic, garlic powder, uh, granulated garlic. There's even a product in the freezer section of uh, pre-minced garlic that's frozen and then they don't have to use that acid. So it tastes really good. Problem is it's a little bit pricey. So, um, but I would really encourage you to try fresh garlic. It is incredible. Uh, it just takes everything up a few notches, huh? Yes. Uh, way better and we find it worth it uh, to go ahead and process the fresh garlic. So what are we gonna do, about eight cloves here? Yes, I um, so. This is a bulb of garlic or a head and then these are the individual cloves. And um, our family's uh, big garlic fans mm -hmm. and it's also great for your immune system. So do you wanna cut that little yes. brown piece off? Can I use the peeler? Sure. It's another uh, use for a potato peeler. That's right. Uh, garlic is really great for your immune system, so I figure during this time, just throw on all the garlic. Keep it, keep your immune system up. I don't really eat them raw, though. Mm. <laughs> don't do it. I haven't done it before, but just the smell is too strong for me. Yes. Do now, I guess we I do mean, eat them raw in pesto. Right, right. Uh, we but have it's not like... You see the clove. Right. Just, right. And I just dropped one. I don't know where it went, but this is plenty. Yeah. Elijah, he's um, almost 12. His birthday's coming up. On Saturday. And he made a really delicious pesto this week. That requires raw garlic. And uh, he made it from our, our basil that's growing in our yard. Talk about incredible smells. Oh my goodness. So now we uh, love to use this chopper. It's great um, for adults, but I also love that it allows kids to be able to hold on to this um, and they love to pound it, especially the little ones like um, Hannah is six, Lydia is four, and they even love to do this. With, uh, with the adult helping uh, hold this down, then they can take this and just smash smash down on this handle and it chops up the garlic really nice. I have never, I've never grown garlic. Um, we did think about getting some garlic this time. We can't. We got I mean, garlic yeah. chives, um, but that's something I would love to learn how to grow because we eat tons of it, um, but I haven't tried yet. Is, is it easy to grow? Has anybody tried? Well, actually, I did once at our other house. And oh, that's right. We got, I planted two, um, two little cloves that were sprouting. Mm -hmm. and They were just I got, already on our kitchen counter, right? Yeah, With the green so I just sprouting put them out. into pots. I think I maybe planted three. One of them rotted, and the two that I got were, like, tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Not very big at all, so... That's my experience. Yeah. With it, but uh, with the garlic, you want to put that in at the very last minute. And I keep turning this off because we're taking a little longer with our chatting. Um, you don't want the garlic to be in there sauteing for longer than about one minute before you add the broth and the tomatoes because you don't want your garlic to burn and turn bitter. So um, I'm going to just stir this garlic in. Oh, oh everything okay. smells so fantastic. You guys. We I wish have, you were here to smell it with us. We don't have a can of tomatoes over here. Yeah, right here. Oh, we do? Oh, yes. Hiding behind the rock. There you go. So okay. uh, these are diced tomatoes. It's just a 14 ounce can. Um, these ones happen to be the basil, garlic, and oregano. And that's great. You can also just use plain old regular diced tomatoes, um, whichever one you have on hand. And 
Yeah. Abigail's going to open up that can. Okay. Awesome. I think. Yesterday uh, for dinner, I made um, some cheater lasagna in the Instant Pot. It was very delicious. Um, and Lydia wanted to open a can, so I just put her right here, and she turned this, and I just held it. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of fun. Little ones can't. This grip right here is hard to do with a manual can opener, which is honestly what I prefer. I don't really like electric can openers. Um, so it's really great for a little one to be able to help by opening can. Should I pour it in? Yeah. Okay, and this is the time right here. If you um, have any more browning on the bottom of your pot, just look and deglaze um, and just rub your <coughs> scraper on the bottom of your instant pot and that should get yeah, it. Yeah, just make sure you thoroughly scrape the bottom and make sure there's nothing stuck on there. And like, like I said, the moisture from all those veggies already took most everything off. So, okay. And I'm going to show you, so this is just a bag of lentils. This is um, a great budget food. It's very nutritious, but it's also cheap and inexpensive and super easy in your Instant Pot and you can make it delicious. Um, about a dollar twenty-five to a dollar fifty a bag for lentils and um, I would really encourage you to try them if you've never tried cooking them before. We just like uh, to put them in our mesh strainer because they're so small they'll go right through the colander. And then uh, you'll just want to kind of look through. It's really interesting because there are also a couple of yellow lentils and split peas in there. It's no big deal. And then I'm going to take this over to the sink by my magic crew here and he's going to rinse that off and bring it back. While we put in the seasonings, what seasonings are we going to put in there, Abigail? We are going to put in oregano and fennel and basil. These are all ingredients that um, give a lot of flavor to your food. And um, so these be are generous. Italian herbs. So yes. anytime we're making Italian food, spaghetti sauce, like she said, she made the lasagna the other day. Um, anytime we're wanting an Italian flavor, the combination of basil, oregano, Fennel and garlic just uh, makes it taste uh, really Italian and delicious. So we're going to do a teaspoon of um, basil and oregano and then about half a teaspoon of fennel. And look at those fennel seeds. They are super flavorful. And if you've never tried them, they have a little bit of a licorice flavor. And if you chew on one, it tastes like licorice. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay, like so here are our lentils. Thank you, Elijah, for washing those. And we're just going to pour these in. If you're the kind of cook who likes to get everything chopped up before you even start, this is very much a throw and go or dump recipe. You can literally just pour everything in and then, um, then set it and walk away. You wouldn't even have to do all that sauteing because it's going to get cooked at the end. Um, and I'm putting in eight cups of homemade, this is sodium free, we haven't added any salt to this chicken broth. Um, and look, it's close, it's getting close to the pressure cooking maximum, but it certainly doesn't go over. So this is a nice sized pot of soup. And Abigail, I'm going to try to get you to um, yes. just kind of scrape the food off from the top, but everything's in there. Oh, I wanted to say. Uh, if you want to do freezer cooking, for example, if you had everything just in a Ziploc bag, you would want to brown your sausage and then um, put it in the bottom of your Ziploc. Then you could put your chopped up veggies, onions, carrots, celery, bell pepper, garlic, uh, pour your can of tomatoes in and just save. You could even do the broth, but broth tends to get leaky in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask us how we know. Um, <laughs> And, and then freeze it and then add just your broth at the very end. Like you could freeze it and have it ready to just dump into the Instant Pot, add your broth, set it and walk away. That would be a really quick um, evening meal, uh, weeknight meal. Um, so this, this recipe freezes very well. You can also cook it all the way like we're gonna do and then freeze portions. So. This is a really large pot of soup. We are a large family and we'll eat it. 
Um, we pretty much eat one pot of soup, um, one pot of, uh, in, in a meal, anyway. Um, but if this recipe is so big it makes leftovers for you, then that's a boon to you. So go ahead and uh, freeze your portions and it will freeze perfectly. And then you could thaw it out and have delicious homemade soup anytime, really quickly. So, okay, did you this? show them how to set oh, it? I have. Okay, do you want me to or are you? Are so you, you can go okay. ahead. Awesome. So we are going to cancel. We have to cancel the saute. And are we putting it on manual or yep. soup? Manual, manual or soup. Okay. I, I choose soup if it's obvious. Which this kind of is. Otherwise, manual is fine. Um, I'm actually going to do this because it's um, meat stew. I think I'm, yeah. And so we're going to set it for 15 minutes on high pressure. And um, we're going to let that go. So mommy made a chant um, that goes liquid, lid, valve, program, pressure, time, pause. So we did, we did liquid, lid, valve, and then our um, program. We got our pressure, our time, and now we pause and wait for it to start. So, now it's going. And so now this is going to, let's move it out of the way oh, yes. before it comes to pressure. And we already have a pot going back here. It's just naturally releasing, which is another great thing about uh, soups in the Instant Pot. You can put them on early in the day whenever you have time, even in the morning before you leave. Um, if you're going off to work, or an appointment and then um, it'll stay on keep warm and your soup or food will be perfectly great um, especially with this recipe I wouldn't leave cabbage in there yeah. or anything that's gonna possibly get overcooked but this is something oh, this will be great <laughs> this will be great if it natural releases all day or you could even if you brown your meat you could set it on a delay timer to yes. start later so um, anyway, this recipe, there's a variety of ways you could do it, and it's going to be fantastic when you get home. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Can I see this? We're ready to show you our dessert. And it's super yummy. I think I could eat this every day. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be good for me to eat it every day, no, but it's yummy no. enough to eat it every day. And I love that it's so simple. Um, and we usually have ingredients on hand for it. Uh, the Instant Pot is great for making custard and creme brulee. Mm -hmm. Because you already, anytime you make custard in the oven, remember you've got to have your hot water bath, you've got to have your um, pan uh, with, if you've ever made it before, you've got to have your little ramekins or custard cups and then Put the whole pan down in the water and carry that to the oven and it spills. So using the Instant Pot to make custard is such an easier way to do it than the conventional method. So, so Abigail. It's my, one of my favorites. Yes. Have we put any onion in this? I don't think I, don't so. think I did so. get out a different okay. bowl, but it will work. Okay, awesome. So, so what, we what are making ingredients do we creme brulee. And, of course, we need lots of cream. And we need vanilla and egg yolks. And I will show you how to separate those. And salt. Yes, just a little pinch of salt. So we are going to pour the cream in. We so need this recipe makes eight servings. Uh, our ramekins hold six ounces to the brim. So if we fill it up to this line, it's about four ounces in here. Yes. And so this five. will make about um, eight, four, four to five ounce servings. Um, so if you need fewer than that, you can cut the recipe in half. If you need more, double it or what, so, whatever. We're going to do three cups of cream because it's amazing. And that's a lot of cream. That's so yummy. Yes. So I should have taken this off earlier. But so. Okay, so creme brulee is like a really rich custard. You can also use milk if you uh, just, if it's not a special meal. Um, and just make regular custard the same way. So she's got it up to the three cups. I'll throw this away. Okay, thank you. So we're just going to pour this into our mixing bowl. If 
I can get a spatula, we can get all that yummy cream into the bowl. And once we get that in, we are going to, so we're just mixing all our ingredients. <laughs> I'm going to separate my egg whites and egg yolks. Should I put it in here? I was gonna um, use that for something else. I was um, going to have you put the whites, put the yolks in okay. here. We'll just put the whites in here. Awesome. So, I don't really, okay, <laughs> yeah. When you're separating egg yolks and egg whites, you kind of have to think through what you're doing because you'll end up getting the wrong thing in the wrong, oh, wrong thing. Hands. Just okay, use your hands. Okay, so uh, we broke open our eggshell and we're just going to, if you don't mind getting your hands sturdy, you can only also use your shell. Um, if you cut it, if you cracked it and it, cut in half and it got in half um, and we're just going to go back and forth with our hands transferring the yolk until all the white is off and then we're going to put it into our yolk bowl there you go and we're going to grab a new one and do it all again okay so separating egg whites is such a funny thing because um, there are so many different little gadgety tools to do it and we actually just got rid of one this week that was kind of funny and just taking up drawer space and we never use it um and i think it was on the one of those kids cooking competitions i saw a child um separating it with their fingers and it was like oh my word that's the easiest way so you want to make sure they have clean hands obviously but it's so much of an easier way to separate egg yolks if you if you can get over having it in your hand it's a little slimy um, but honestly, kids probably love that, huh? Yeah. Um, you can just use the shells and go back and forth. Abigail's going to go wash her hands. So we're going to put these egg whites to the side. Um, maybe someone's going to make meringue this week. I don't know. Angel food cake, marshmallows. We've made marshmallows. They're very, very sticky. Um, so I'm going to have you go ahead okay. and stir those egg yolks. So we did five egg yolks. And... We are just going to stir those up and pour them into our cream. Um, and then we're going to set that aside and stir this up. Um, so then we are going to do sugar. We are going to um, put one third of a cup, actually it's two thirds of a cup in the whole thing. But later we're going to add vanilla to sugar for the bruleing part. So we just uh, di cut, we're doing one third of a cup into the creme, or the cream. Um, we're gonna stir that up. And so we did one third of a cup in there and we are going to do one and a half, one teaspoon of vanilla. And then, ooh, a whisk, thank you. Okay, and I'm going to show you how uh, for the topping, uh, the thing that makes creme brulee really special um, is that you put the sugar on at the end. This is after it's cooked and cooled and, um, and then you're going to torch it. Yeah, for just a half batch, uh, if you're using, if you're going to cut this recipe in half, go with three egg yolks and um, that'll be, it'll be great. Uh, that's what we did for our test batch before this, was just to do three egg yolks and it worked perfectly. So for the topping, I'm gonna make vanilla sugar and um, what we're just doing is taking a teaspoon of vanilla and we're just gonna pour it on the sugar and we're just gonna mix it up. So we're just gonna stir this. This is another job that would I think would be great for little children. Like Lydia could do a great job of this, just smushing it with yeah. her fingers to mix that in. And of course, she loved to do it because then she can lick her fingers. Afterwards. <laughs> That's right. She would love it. She would be thrilled. So and, it mean, has be? a total of two thirds of a cup of sugar and two teaspoons of vanilla. We just divided those and sweat them among the brulee sugar and the creme sugar. Yeah, the brulee sugar, in fact, I might have gotten this too wet. Yeah, sorry. Um, but this is gonna go on at the end and we're gonna show you how to cook 
cook that. Okay, so we are going to divide, not really divide this up. This makes eight, but we only have four ramekins here right now. So we will do four ramekins. And I found out that about a full ladle makes it up to the line of this ramekin. There you go. And so I'll wipe off. One. I'll wipe that off. Awesome. Okay. Uh, you are going to need a cup of water. Yes. To go in your instant pot. And you before do want to make this. In yeah, pour your, your water in before you put your ramekins in. And so I'm waiting a second till we get the water. We still have to wrap these in foil. That's right. Thank um, you for reminding me. We tried it. No, it's fail without foil. So, yeah. Unless you want curdled, curdled creme brulee, <laughs> do foil. It's kind of crazy. Okay, so. so we're putting our water in, and we have the trivet in here. So we're just pouring the water, and you do want a trivet. If you don't have a trivet, you can uh, make some little snakes out of aluminum foil and wrap that around just so you have something for them to sit up on so they're not down in the water. Yes. Okay, so it does not really matter if you do the shiny side or the dull side on the bottom, but I'm just going to put this tight on it, fold this side down and then this side down and fold all the sides down. That way no steam will get into your eggs and cream. And then pack Custard. it down on the bottom and set it into your Instant Pot. We're going to do that with all four of them. Be kind of generous with your foil because otherwise you'll end up wasting more because you were skimpy and then <laughs> you won't have it covered. You won't have it covered and then you have to pull out more and then you get too much. So it's just easier to just be generous at first and then you will be good. So, so this is an awesome recipe to make ahead. Uh, this can last a couple days in your refrigerator, and then you'll just want to do the um, crisping of the sugar at the end after when it's about time to serve it. Otherwise, that'll melt down again. But um, this would last a few days in your refrigerator if you cover it with um, like plastic wrap after you cook it in the Instant Pot. Um, and so it can be done ahead of time, and it'll probably taste even better because it's got had time for that vanilla to really meld with your yummy cream. Okay, so we are doing our last one. Like we said, this recipe makes eight, and but we have some leftover, but we're just gonna stop with the four here. And um, so you can see that if you cut the recipe in half, it's not gonna be a problem at all. Okay. I will show you how uh, you can stack these on top. So um, you can usually fit four in the bottom, four of these size ramekins. Yeah, we have found that if you'll, uh, if you're using an instant pot trivet and you put it, put one of them inside that little handle, that's the way to get four. And then when you do your next you layer, four you'll just top. stagger them, stack them on that crack, you know, between them. You can fit four and maybe even a fifth, ninth one in the middle on top, possibly. At least eight for sure. So now we're going to, we have liquid in here, right? Yes. yes. Okay, liquid. so we're going to close our lid, lid, liquid lid, and then our valve, this is an ultra, and so it automatically um, seals. Yeah, but yep. you do want to just check it just in case. Um, this is not plugged in. There we go. Okay, so uh, we are going to do it on the egg setting um, because that's going to be a lot gentler for the cream and eggs and it has eggs in it. So we're going to do for 10 minutes, no 13 minutes and then low pressure, always low pressure for any eggs and we are going to keep one on and then we're going to press start. And when this goes off, we're just going to leave it for 10 minutes to naturally release. Um, it seems like a long time, but it is worth it. You will, they will turn out like this if you do it 
and it's perfectly set. Of course, we cooled these, so it was a little jiggly when we took them out, but then when we cooled them, it firmed up. So, yeah, so these have been in the refrigerator. Yes. Okay, hold off just one okay. second. So, uh, we have a couple of cute little visitors that are gonna come over now and join us for just a second. Hi, so this is Lydia. And she's, how old are you, Lydia? Four. She's four, she's four. and this is Hannah. Let Hannah up there on that stool, too. How old are you, Hannah? Six. And this is? Miriam. How old are you? I'm nine and a half. Yeah, you got to talk really loud, okay? I'm nine and a half. She's nine and a half. Uh, um, and girls, are we having, so we... Um, we're expecting a new baby and our baby is going to be here um, about the end of January, beginning of February. And girls, are we having a brother or a sister? Sister! <laughs> Another so, girl! These girls are super excited about having a new baby sister. Um, and we're so excited and thankful for this new life and um, looking forward to meeting her in a few months right girls mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you so much so lydia you know we have two boys and six uh, five girls five girls six now so we're the boys were especially uh but we were all kind of hoping to even up the numbers but lydia really always really wanted kept a sister. Wanting a sister so she gets her um her hope fulfilled Okay, so, so we're going to show you how to do the sugar now. Yes. I'm gonna, oh, do you oh. want me to get the regular actual teaspoon? teaspoon tablespoon? No, I think it's... Or oh, can you? yes. We should do so that. you measure one tablespoon of the vanilla sugar on top of your cooled custard. Um, and it's really best if you make this ahead because then it'll have time to cool and firm up and be yes. cold in your fridge mm -hmm. before you do this step. So uh, this is the vanilla sugar that we made earlier. And so we're just gonna get approximately a tablespoon and sprinkle it onto our cream. Or cream. And if you get a glob like that, I'm sure Abigail's gonna just yep. kind of spread that out. And then you just coat that, and I'm gonna do that to all four. So sprinkle it on. You can even just throw it on and then spread it out if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Uh, this is what really sets creme brulee apart and it just gives it that awesome kind of gourmet finish that you don't find on regular custard. And it's a lot cheaper if you make it at home, a lot cheaper if you make <laughs> it at home than if you go to a restaurant. No kidding. To eat it. Restaurants. So. Uh, Make a good profit margin on this dessert. So, okay, now, now for the torching. I'm gonna yeah, you get come to over do there. The torching. So let me get this uh, stool. So this is um, I actually just received this for was it Mother's Day or my birthday? Birthday for my birthday. Um, and we have our fire extinguisher close by just in case. But um, this is a regular. Was this a culinary? It's not a culinary torch. Um, and my husband and my children did the research and found out that this is really better than the culinary torches because it does the job faster and with more power. And um, so I've been really excited to have this. Um, they picked this out and got it at Lowe's. And this is a propane, little propane tank. So, um, so you do need to be careful. I do not turn it upside down. You want to keep it as upright as possible. Keep your uh, fire extinguisher nearby. And uh, I'm going to tilt this just a little so, uh, so it won't be too upside down. But then I'm going to have the fire going on this. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. It lights on its own, this little doodad. I mean, it's self-lighting. You don't have to take a match to it is what I meant. So I'm going to hold this up. And we're just going to turn our little bowl. And keep flame. the sugar moving. 
keep the sugar moving and it's just gonna melt really nice and get nice and brown on there. And see how it's just kind of spreading itself out. And then I'm gonna take it off and stop it. Okay, so see how that melted really nice and spread out on its own. The top of this uh, little ramekin got a little hot, so you wanna be careful, but as long as you're holding on the back on the bottom, you're gonna be okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do another one, show you again. Light it up. And we're just gonna turn and turn and keep it moving. And keep that sugar rolling in there as it melts. And in just a second, it's gonna all melt and spread out on top of here. And then we'll be done. It's going the wrong way, I think. There it went. Awesome, so there's two. We'll do these other ones in a little while. Um, if you do not have a torch, so the torch is a great tool, and I don't know uh, how much this was because it was a birthday present, but I think it was a lot more budget friendly than the ones you'll find at the culinary store because this is just at the hardware store. Yeah. Uh, so it's a great, better tool less money but if you don't have a torch don't want a torch um, you can use the broiler in your oven um, it one con is that it heats up the whole creme part so creme brulee if you use the torch it's supposed to be cold so then you just torch it and it's still cold but if you do the oven then it's going to be yeah warm. it kind of warms up the custard it warms up your whole dish uh, so the oven is not really the best tool for it, but it can be done. So, um, but otherwise, you might just tr be adventurous and try it. Try a little kitchen torch. Yep. You can also use that for uh, roasting peppers and um, that sort of thing. So it won't be just a unitasker in your kitchen. Okay, so we're going to move this out of the way. Mama we'll cools. have a little taste in a minute after that. You want to let that sugar cool and get hard. It makes a really nice, um, crisp finish. That's what you want. Yes. Now, has this? Okay, we can actually release this, right? No. Nope, it's still cooking. It's got one more minute. This one. Huh? Oh, it has 12 more minutes. Okay, so maybe we won't be releasing that. I don't know. This and we'll is do the creme brulee. The, yes. Yes, you knew that? Okay, awesome. Yeah. And then that's not done Over yet. here is our lentil soup. So we're gonna open this up and show you how that looks when you open it. And I'm gonna get the ladle. Here we go. Okay, so this uh, lentil soup has already cooked and it looks gorgeous. It's just been sitting here naturally releasing. And you can see this, all the colors. I love the colors of the orange carrots, the red tomatoes. The green bell peppers. Yeah, those bell peppers. And, <laughs> and the nice brown lentils. Okay, so we're gonna just dish out a little of this into a bowl. Um, it's really yummy, but it's also very hot. Anytime you're um, serving yourself something from your Instant Pot, it's, it's, it's hot. extremely hot. So. Just wait even a if little it's while. Been keeping warm. For yes, a while. even on keep warm. And um, I wonder. Rachel was going to get parsley or something. Did you end up doing that? If you sprinkle something nice and green and fresh on it, it makes it look fresher and brighter. We yes. don't have that ready right now. That's okay. That is okay. So we're going to taste for salt and see if we need to correct it for salt. Um, looks like it needs salt. It looks like it needs salt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not it, sure I you think can it tell smells, by looking. It smells, but it smells I like it needs see. salt. Okay. And in past experiences, it usually does need salt, so okay. that's why it looks like it needs okay. salt. <laughs> Abigail just thinks it needs salt. Um, my husband and I really like we're, we're just going to let it cool off for a second, so we, we don't want to burn our mouths. Mm -mm. Um, my husband and I really like to put a little Tabasco in here, or um, cayenne pepper, or Abraham. Um, my son Abraham, he's 17. He made, we accidentally planted in our garden 
um, jalapenos that turn red. And so I don't know if that's a red pepper or a jalapeno that got really ripe. Um, but he made real genuine, uh, genuine fermented red pepper sauce. So gourmet. we're gonna gourmet. We're gonna add that at the end, probably when we're having lunch. Okay, ready to taste it? Mmm, it's good. That is good. You were right. It does need just a little salt. No, you don't not think for so? me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, maybe well, there you go. <laughs> I could use a little more, and that's why we don't put salt on at the beginning. Because then, <clears throat> excuse me, you um, once like you, some people have a little. Never mind. <laughs> well, we all have different. Our bodies. Yes, that's need salt at different levels. So. If, you're, if your body is craving salt, you usually need it. Um, it tastes great, though. Really yummy. Um, really flavorful. And um, I love it. Another thing that would be great on here is fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Oh, yes. Yeah. That would be, that would be awesome. That would be amazing. <laughs> the crew wants to <laughs> taste it. Okay, now we're going to taste the creme brulee. Yes. Okay, so it's cool off now. And are we? Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. So, yeah. Can you hear that? No, that yeah. was not it. It got that. nice it and got crunchy. Crunchy and so yum. Yummy. Oh yeah. That's like uh, it's like stained glass window. Yeah. It's beautiful. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna break in. This one actually got a really thick layer. So look how nice that custard's set up. It's beautiful. It's creamy. And here we go. Mm. Mm. That that is so good, so good. Make it. <laughs> she says you should make some. Um, I love how that the sugar gets all caramelized and it tastes like caramel. Yes, it's delicious. Yummy. Uh, you should definitely try making this in your instant pot, and it's so easy to make great little dessert for your family um we would love it if you would like our page um on facebook we're at the facebook.com slash the cooking fam we're also on instagram at the cooking fam and you can follow us on there sometimes we put stories up and different pictures of things that are going on in our house um, and on the farm and on the farm <clears throat> lots of kids cooking and ideas and ways for kids to get involved um, it's a great way of spending time with your family is in the kitchen and um, you get quality time together and then you have a meal uh, you've produced a meal and then you get to sit down and eat your meal yep and even clean up <laughs> some really fun times are in the cleanup right turn on the loud music and just everybody does their job and it's great yeah so um, we hope you'll like us, and you can also go to our uh, webpage at thecookingfamily.com, and on there you'll find recipes for these, this soup, and many other recipes are on there. Um, they're, they're delicious, they're whole foods. Uh, we use very few, as few as, well, we try to keep cutting down on processed foods, and um, so you'll find recipes for making whole foods and uh, real, real food. And uh, also on there, you can sign up. We have a free uh, Fearless Newbie Instant Pot mini course, and um, that's free. You can sign up on there, put your email address in, and then you can uh, go take that course and learn basics of how you can use your Instant Pot. Um, we would love it if you would share that with friends as well who might benefit from being able to get, get their Instant Pot out of the box, get over that fear, and start using it in in your kitchen uh, so we hope that you'll try this recipe and uh, make it or or one of these or both of these recipes if you do we would love for you to post pictures and let us know that you made it and uh, how it turned out for you and we want you to remember that your family could cook and enjoy great meals together we'll see you next time thanks so much for joining us bye, bye.